Hello everyone out there, how are you all doing? I'm Kate Hill and I am here to give you the best unbiased and honest commentary about our property markets, along with some fantastic hints and tips as we go. So stay tuned for all your latest property news. Okay everyone, now before we get started quickly, I just wanted to let you know that I'm doing a series of videos for you, all called Property Finance Explained. So myself and Tina from Smart Move will get into some of the nitty gritty of what it all means, some of the terminology, what you can do to get yourselves purchase ready, or if you're stuck and you don't quite know the way forward. So watch out for those. Okay, into our news. Now, according to the Property Investment Professionals of Australia, PIPA, the number of property investors active in the market remains below long-term averages and is likely to add further pressure to the availability of rental properties. They've done some really interesting analysis of recent lending data. And they found that from about 2007 to 2017, investors generally kind of represented about 35% of the property market. However, for at least four years, their activity was constrained below this percentage because of the unequal lending conditions at the time between investors and owner occupiers. Now, Pippa note that the volume of investors purchasing has been trending up over the past few months. I've reported that in my news articles too. But the fact that they were generally stuck on the sidelines for a number of years means there is a significant rental property deficit in most parts of the nation. So the tenant demand versus rental property supply imbalance has been worsening ever since the very overzealous lending restrictions targeting investors came into effect back in 2017. Now, according to SQM Research, the national vacancy rate's most recent peak was in December 2016 when it hit 2.9%, which we consider to be a percentage that is representative of a balanced market. But since then, there has been fewer and fewer rental properties available for tenants in most part of the country because of the subdued number of investors in the market. And as I've reported before, the national vacancy rate now is just 1.7%, according to SQM Research, with some areas having rental markets that are critically undersupplied, such as Adelaide and Perth, where vacancy rates are around 0.6%. Now, keep in mind that this is happening during a period when our population is missing hundreds of thousands of new overseas migrants each year as well. The reduction in rental property supply over the past four years is causing rents to increase strongly, obviously, which is creating financial and housing problems for many tenants. Now, we are seeing this in the news a fair bit now. So the problem that we've had is that the government actually relies on investors to fund the majority of housing options, and yet they have been and are still, again, curtailing lending. So who knows what's going to happen when the next wave of permanent migrants and that more transient population comes flooding in, which will happen because we need to keep our economy truly buoyant. Where are they all going to live and how will they afford it? We shall have to wait and see. Now, the continued strength of the property market has Westpac economists predicting home prices will have increased 22% by the end of the year. Westpac economists had initially forecast 18% increase, but current market conditions have prompted them to revise that figure yet again to 22%. Property prices across the major capital cities have increased on average by 17% in the last 12 months to September and are on track to increase another 1.5% in October. Westpac predicts the end of the Melbourne and Sydney lockdowns will lead to further upward pressure on prices. It's not just that, it's the lack of listings. 
Their chief economist says that reopening will offset any dampening of prices caused by APRA moves to rein in lending. He tips price growth to continue into 2022, although the pace of growth might slow. Westpac is predicting an interest rate rise in early 23, despite the Reserve Bank confirming that it does not expect to increase rates until 2024. Some lenders are continuing to offer cut price interest rates and financial incentives to home buyers despite moves by the regulator to rein in borrowing. The Commonwealth Bank and ING both cut their variable interest rates last week for new customers with larger deposits and, according to comparison of website Rate City, 28 lenders have cut at least one of their variable rates in the past month. Finance analysts are predicting the continued competition from banks will reduce the impact of the APRA move to require banks to more cautiously assess home loan customers. Remember that banks must now assess new borrowers at an interest rate three percentage points higher than the actual rate of their loan when it was previously 2.5%. And finally, the construction industry continues to feel the flow-on effect of the federal government's home builder scheme, with new figures revealing that record construction starts are happening. The latest ABS figures show Australia experienced its biggest quarter for construction of detached housing in the three months to the 30th of June. Building work started on over 40,000 houses during the period, which is an increase of 19.3% on that previous record, which was set in uh, around 2000. The ABS figures show that in the financial year 2021, work started on over 139,000 detached houses throughout Australia, which is eclipsing the previous record set in the financial year 1999 of over 132,000. Housing Industry Association economists predict that the new record will remain for many years. The Northern Territory, interestingly, had the biggest increase in construction during the June quarter with a 73% rise in the number of buildings starting construction. Victoria was up 31%, Tasmania 24% and New South Wales 16%. Now we will keep you posted as always on all things property from around Australia as our year progresses. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give me a little like too if you are enjoying the free content and I will see you again really, really soon. Bye.